You can be seated. And the matter before the court is, it says Oxford, but I didn't think that's right. Uh, WCB 23313. I think we have, oh, I'm looking at the wrong one, that's why. I was like, I knew that wasn't the right docket number. That one is the right docket number. Uh, Michaud versus Caribou Ford et al. Uh, we are being streamed, I hope. Apparently there were some problems yesterday, live on the web, both orally and by video these days. Uh, if council would identify yourselves by saying your names for the record, together with the party you represent, starting with the appellant or petitioner. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. I am Norman Trask. I am here on behalf of the employee appellant, Steve Michaud. Good morning. John Cronin here on behalf of Caribou Ford Mercury and the Main Auto Dealers Association Workers' Comp Trust, the appellee in this case. Thank you. Council, if you're ready to proceed, we'd be happy to hear your arguments. Thank you, Your Honor. It pleases the court, Council. I am Norman Trask, and I am here on behalf of the appellant, Steve Michaud, in this matter. As the court is aware from the factual history in this case, the basic facts in this case are relatively simple. And as I was reviewing the case uh, last night, my wife came up to me and said, don't overthink it. And I've learned over 37, 38 years of marriage that when your wife gives you advice, it, it's often good to take it. And, and that's what I've tried to do as I prepared for this uh, argument this morning. Uh, Mr. Michaud was working for Caribou Ford when on December 26, 2014, uh, a spring from a part that he was working on uh, came loose and struck him in the left eye. The medical evidence indicates and determines that as a result of that injury, Mr. Michaud was rendered effectively blind at that point in time. Over the ensuing years, he did have multiple operations in an attempt to restore vision. However, all of those operations resulted in minimal to no improvement in his vision. And essentially from December of 2014 to the present time, he has more than 80% vision loss in his left eye, thereby entitling him to specific loss benefits under the Workers' Compensation Act. The Parties attended a mediation in this case in March of 2022, and at the time of mediation, ultimately, full agreement was reached with respect to the fact that Mr. Michaud had lost vision in his eye and was therefore entitled to specific loss benefits. And in addition, the parties agreed that the insurance carrier uh, could take a credit or an offset for incapacity benefits that were paid between the date of the injury and the date that benefits were paid for uh, specific The green light loss. is on, so I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go to page five of your brief. Uh, and I want to make sure I understand your argument. Um, is your argument, there you're explaining how uh, while Mr. Michaud did undergo four surgeries after the date of his injury, there was never a reasonable likelihood of restoring uh, vision uh, completely. The hope was to achieve some improvement. And then you describe the letter from the doctor as suggesting there was never any chance. So is the test that you're saying we should apply uh, based on the degree of probability at the beginning that there will be improvement uh, from the surgeries? as opposed to just waiting and seeing what happens and then giving retroactive benefits in case it doesn't work out? I think in this case, <clears throat> given the magnitude of the injury, um, obviously we do, have to, we do have to look back to some degree. Um, we do that with specific loss, but we do that all the time in, in workers' compensation cases when it comes to awarding back benefits. Um, the standard here, in our opinion, is not that the employee reached maximum medical improvement. That's kind of a term of art. 
Um, it's in the statute, and it means the data on which further improvement is not likely to occur, and it's, it's well defined. The specific law statute doesn't require <clears throat> a finding that the employee has reached maximum medical improvement. It, instead, the statute talks about you know a reasonable likelihood, which is two different standards in our so, view. So let's say there's the injury, and let's say the evidence shows there's a 90% chance that uh, there's going to be improvement and it's going to bring his vision back up so that it's not 80% loss. And then it turns out they were wrong. When do we start the clock? I think we start the clock under those facts when the injury initially occurred. So we always look retroactively to see if it doesn't work, we go back to the, the, the first point of the date of the accident. I think when we're dealing with an issue like this with a specific loss statute, yes. But uh, uh, following up on Justice Connors' question there, I think you said, well, you, know, you have a doctor that said he was more than 80 percent, then he is now, it's, you know, the whole thing runs back to zero. But in the agreed statement of fact, just looking at paragraphs, I don't know, 7 through 14, there's repeated, Dr. Wedding reports, he states his vision is better. Uh, uh, well, he states that he can see distance better, his vision gets better throughout the day, the patient feels he's getting better, and uh, uh, as of 2017, he was saying he hasn't reached maximum improvement. So, lawyer, the situation is not going to get better. On the contrary, Whiting's things are, well, we're optimistic in a way. So, aren't, doesn't the rule you're espousing bushwhack an employer who's presumably support and say, well, he didn't get better, so we go back to zero, despite the fact of all of the sort of positive. I agree, obviously, Your Honor, with what you're saying, what uh, Dr. Whiting was saying, but I think we have to look in the context of somebody <coughs> essentially zero vision, improvement. Well, and, and actually did get better from there. And as you know, there's time for payment. There's notice of the pay. So they really didn't get notice of the fact that this is a specific loss until that, that last letter from Dr. Whiting. This is true. That's, that's making Or uh, the employee coming forward with evidence that shows a loss heard actively to when it occurred, when he probably would have been there for them to study, uh, show we better. Can I? Can I ask you a slightly different question? Did the ALJ, was it a factual finding? I, I understand what happened here. <coughs> Certainly there were repeated interventions and, and hindsight. Um, he didn't reach um, October of 21 as or I mean, it seemed when I read, well, I could say it wasn't real all those interventions. Even in respect, it was the same. Is that a question of fact? I think it is a question of I think at the same well, time you, you stipulated to the facts. Yeah, yes. so the facts are but met, uh, the endpoint was it? It was not. No, and the, the judge found that it was Dr. Manin's record, this division, and he lost it and, uh, at the time of the injury. The, um, Dr. Whiting and uh, the, the that we talked about was there. He, I mean, he, he uses some language of hindsight um, with the benefit of hindsight. My client was it um, reasonably occurred. At the well, isn't the fundamental leg legal <coughs> issue here what the word endpoint means? In other words, the ALJ appeared to interpret endpoint meaning the end of treatment for the injury. Your position endpoint the the any level of improvement in injury. In in theory, for the <clears throat> for the rest of Mr. Michaud's life, but that doesn't mean that he's ever going to have his vision restored. In fact, he's not going to have his vision restored. C counsel, the, the, the language is, Tracy, anyway, reached a reasonable end opposed to sustaining the injury? To have specific loss continued, but doesn't make loss benefits, treatment is not. Where then with the end cases? I mean, it's determined to be the date of the amputation, not the date of the injury. But yet the... The finger, the, the limb, presumably the injury. In the amputee, uh, prime one, obviously. Um, fingers gone, benefits are well on that. It doesn't necessarily mean that the amputation occurs gone, there's specific loss. The loss of a limb, the, the benefits are really of the different. 
different, but both in both instances you have, I suppose in theory, some could lose I, the eyeball itself, result in 80% lose the eyeball per se. You need to differently for this for loss of average benefit. I'm asking in many a big policy we impose obligation in that instance, kind of a way to an incentive to pay it. But in this instance, the employer's obligation to pay this didn't trigger until way down the road. I think I could, this will give you to editorialize. Did the due date occur? Choice. <laughs> and the reason I say is that's often for compensation. Last question. Somebody jury, the employer contests the process. We go to troubleshooting, we go to mediation, we go to hearing. <clears throat> and then a year, two years later, perhaps, we have a decree that says, yes, this person was injured at work. <clears throat> He's entitled to benefits and benefits from the date each payment was due, and that's really what we're saying here. Vision was lost in at the time of the injury. I lost that, therefore, interest that that benefit. And I agree with you as well. Case law incentivize. I don't call it a penalty, but that's the really, it incentive. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Your Honor. If I may begin, um, this uh, focuses on take a focus of an agreement between two attorneys and station board. Parties are paid for the amount of interest due before the administrative law and here before uh, this honorable that uh, interest is due for some priority. Um, the purpose of mediation and the voluntary so matter, I would say, mm -hmm. makes clear. And this is authority that's been in place for over 20, 25 years, that physical loss is different than loss of vision in the physical loss. And the Tracy decision also reasonable method. So, and although it's own actual loss, in this case, this party was not until Dr. Miller's our position, uh, argument, uh, would put the insurance case uh, by the yes. And I'd like to know, I am saying a little bit with what the finding is. It says that the of specific uh, doctor made the routine, the I think court. When I turned decision of the it AL find reasonable medical endpoint on October 4th evident. I guess I'm I'm just trying to figure out whether find, it seems to have accepted the date of the rule map. And I think and in order to address that is this is a finding act, is how I would look at it, and basically establish number 20 that Mr. to be at management at any point prior to that report. But how did the report actually read medical and ties into the issue of odor honor? I would ties into the track. Say to the doctor, every no doctor, and for whatever reason, the doctor. So then, or even though nothing has changed with regard to the. Well, I think in this case, it's when it's received, especially within a week of uh, issuance and receipt. And the key is on the Tracy decision, medical reached. In this medical does of the report. It relates. That's, that's that's this case. The parties uh, viewing the stipulation as is board looked at it. And the appellate looked at it. It, it, it looked, or, or excuse me, that occurred at the time because there had been no prior. So that's that's what the parties. The parties include the, the date of injury. There's an eight. Of I thought because of an instantaneous percent of vision. Employee approved. That's and I raised three. So there was a long way that's been. At that you also have a stipulation that says at that point of another question that you've all entered to uh, you know, agreeably the date of injury. Just that one being pushed, but you're playing bets as of being correct. And you also, as a result of the argument, uh, entitled to an offset or openly paid loss. So, are you in context? As the time to the lawsuit, he had not yet reached the end point under Tracy. Again, in Tracy, the employee had nine years, twenty pun intended. As asked whether Mr. Mr. Michaud was much like in the Tracy, and actually paid those specific laws. So it, it was kind of ambiguous for workers' comp because they're on Tracy. They should defer. We don't, fair. So, if we look, is fair when in hindsight he never improved to give the interest amount to the worker is that is to the employee uh, she's getting on day we got told as a matter thank you your honor that is a great question fact, not entitled as a matter of fairness because not paying to a withholding payment in this case there was no delay in withholding of any payment for throughout the treatment chronology there continued to be assessments that he may be improving but but assume there hadn't been a full stipulation okay let's ignore the stipulation for the moment the uh, october 21 is the date of the uh that he would rise and 